Now let's talk about a treaty that the United States made between uh, the U.S. and China, and that's known as the Burlingame Treaty. And the Burlingame Treaty established formal friendly relations between the two countries, with the United States granting China most favored nation status. It was ratified in 1868. Now the treaty recognized China's right of eminent domain over all of its territory, and it gave China the right to appoint consuls at ports in the United States. And specifically, the treaty provided that citizens of the United States in China of every religious persuasion and Chinese subjects in the United States shall enjoy entire liberty of conscience and shall be exempt from all disability or persecution on account of their religious faith or worship in either country. And it granted certain, and it granted certain privileges to citizens of either country residing in the other. But the privilege of naturalization was specifically withheld. Now importantly, Chinese immigration to the United States was encouraged. Opposition to Congress and Chinese immigration eventually is going to lead Rutherford B. Hayes to off authorize James Burrow Angle to renegotiate the treaty in 1880. <clears throat> the treaty was amended to suspend but not prohibit Chinese immigration while confirming the obligation of the United States to protect the rights of those immigrants already arrived. Now, the treaty is going to be reversed in 1882 by the Chinese Exclusion Act. This treaty allowed railroad corporations, again, the Burlingame Treaty allowed railroad corporations and the mining industry to recruit heavily and benefit from the use of Asian labor forces. So how did the hatred towards Asians begin? Well, this is where we get Dennis Kearney and the Working Men's Party. And Dennis Kearney was a California populist political leader in the late 19th century. He was known for his nativist and racist views towards Chinese immigrants. By August 1770, Kearney had been elected secretary of the newly formed Working Men's Party of California, and he often led violent attacks on Chinese, including denunciations of powerful Central Pacific Railroad, uh, of, the, of the powerful Central Pacific Railroad, which had employed them in large numbers. Kearney's Irish immigrant background made him subject to frequent accusations since uh, Kearney was uh, a, foreign, a foreigner in, himself. So <clears throat> his populist rhetoric and his nativist baiting, similar to the tactics used by President uh, uh, Trump, by Rush Limbaugh, by Glenn Beck today, gained him a considerable following. In the late 1880s, Kearney claimed credit for making, quote unquote, the Chinese question a national issue and affecting the legislation of what would become known as the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882. So, in California, at first when surface gold was plentiful, the Chinese were well tolerated and well received. But as gold became harder and to find and competition increased, animosity towards Chinese and other foreigners increased. So after forcibly being driven from the mines, most Chinese are going to settle in enclaves in cities. And it was mainly San Francisco, but here in Los Angeles, Seattle, Portland, uh, and some in San Diego. Now, with the post-Civil War economy in decline in the 1870s, anti-Chinese animosity became politicized by Dennis Kearney and his Working Men's Party. And he influenced California uh, Governor John Bigler. So both of them blamed Chinese coolies for depressed wage levels. And so another significant anti-Chinese group is going to organize in California during the same era, and that was the Supreme Order of Caucasians with some 64 chapters statewide. So newspapers around the country, and especially in California, started to discredit and blame the Chinese for most things, especially for white unemployment. And the police also discriminated against the Chinese by using the slightest opportunity to arrest them. Let's take a look at the documentary featuring the nativist reaction against Chinese immigrants. Violence against Chinese laborers increased, the most prevalent sign of a growing nativist movement aimed at all immigrants. In 1882, just one year after Qin Long's arrival in California, the United States passed legislation banning most Chinese immigration. 
The Chinese Exclusion Act um, excluded Chinese laborers from entering the United States, exempted diplomats, students, and merchants. It also denied all Chinese, regardless of what their class status was, um, the right to become an American citizen. And I think it was passed because of the rise in nativism during that time period. Obviously, there's a certain class fear about Chinese laborers coming into the country, and that's why they're specifically targeted for exclusion. But I think it receives national support, and it receives support from all the various classes, because all Chinese are viewed as somehow un-American, that they bring over not just the possibility of lowering the wage scale, but also these dangerous habits associated with heathenism. It really sets the precedent for a series of Asian exclusion laws and really immigration exclusion laws as a whole. Immigrant and minority groups, they're always the first to be victimized in times of societal stress. When there are economic problems, they're blamed for bringing on the economic problems. When there are crimes, they're blamed for being the criminals, even when there's no evidence. People assume the other. The Exclusion Act would finally be repealed in 1943. But until then, facing loneliness, discrimination, and the threat of violence, many Asian immigrants chose to return home. But many more stayed in San Francisco and built a strong cross-cultural society that would have a deep and lasting impact on American life. Okay, so that's the Chinese Exclusion Act. The Chinese Exclusion Act was a significant restriction on free immigration in U.S. history. The act excluded Chinese skilled and unskilled laborers and Chinese employed in mining from entering the country for 10 years under penalty of imprisonment and deportation. The act also affected Asians who had already settled in the United States. Any Chinese who left the United States to go and visit family back in China had to obtain certifications for re-entry, and the act made Chinese immigrants permanent aliens by excluding them from U.S. citizenship. And so now we get to see the term alien uh, being applied to them. After the act's passage, Chinese men in the U.S. had little chance of ever reuniting with their families, along with the restrictions that followed it, or of starting new families in their new homes. So for all practical purposes, the Exclusion Act froze the Chinese community in place in 1882, and it prevented it from growing and assimilating into U.S. society as European immigrants groups did.